Let me acquaint you with the basic radio broadcast facilities. But before that, I'll let you pip into the radio studios of BCLB quickly and quietly. Stand by. Page 20, line 1, sa sign ng technician. Ayan. Huwag mong isipin si Marina. Di mo lang nakita ang kanyang tuwa na makita niya ang bata. Ang iniisip lang namin ang kapakanan ninyong mag-ina. Hindi ko alam kung paano ko babayaran ng mga kinawa mong kabutihan sa aming mag-ina. Sana'y magpatawad mo ko. Kinawa ko lang naman ang planong pagtakas para sa kapakanan ng aking anak. Patawarin mo ko. Tama na ang pag-iyak mo. Ang mabuti pa'y magpahinga ka na. Huwag kang mag-alala. Ang mahalaga ay magkasama tayo mag -ina. At nasa maayos kayong kalagayan. Marina, nandito na kami. Ah, Tess, kunin mo nga yung mga bagahe. Just witness the different scenes that normally take place in a radio station. Now, you have seen how drama recording is done. You have an idea of what goes on in a live broadcast. You have seen the various broadcast equipment used in production. Let me now tell you the functions of the basic equipment used in producing and airing a radio program. This is a microphone. Its function is to transform sound waves into electrical impulses or radio waves. There are several types of microphones, but three are commonly used for broadcast. These are the dynamic or pressure microphone, velocity or ribbon microphone, and the condenser or capacitor microphone. The dynamic or pressure microphone is ideal for outdoor tapings or remote broadcasts. Compared with other types, the dynamic microphone is less sensitive to gusts of winds. The velocity or ribbon microphone is commonly used in broadcast studios. They lack tolerance for winds that they are not advisable for outdoor or remote work. The last type and the most expensive is the condenser or capacitor microphone. It produces high quality sound. However, it is inconvenient to use. Microphones also have different pick-up patterns. The omnidirectional or non-directional mic picks up sounds from any direction. It is ideal for taping dramas, round table discussions, panel discussions, and group singing. The bidirectional or figure of eight picks up sound from two directions. This mic is ideal for interviews. Another pickup pattern is called unidirectional. Unidirectional microphone picks up sounds from only one side. This mic is used when you want to eliminate other sounds but the announcer. During earlier years, most musical selections come from records that we call LPs or 45s. So, turntables were necessity in any station. Now, CD players are used instead. However, turntables and CD players have the same function. That is, to transform sounds imprinted on discs into sounds that we hear. Another must in a radio station are the tape recorders. They are needed for recording original productions, for any delayed programming, or for airing of canned programs. Tape recorders are of different types. Perhaps the most familiar to you is the portable or handheld tape recorder. It is lightweight, 
thus suitable for outdoor interviews or for gathering of local news. However, it does not provide full fidelity recordings. A better one is the broadcast quality recorder. It is also portable but a bit bulky and heavier. There's also what we call reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. It is always available in the control room of a station. Then a cartridge player. This is ideal for playing plugs or important short messages. The tape in the cartridge is in the form of a joined loop. So when the play button of the machine is pushed, the tape instantly plays or runs until it finds the start of the recording again. Therefore, there is no need for rewinding. Ito ang Radio DZLB, ang tinig ng kaunlaran. The nerve center of a radio station is the broadcast console. The broadcast console has two main functions. One is to mix or join together in various combinations the sounds from the microphones, turntables, tapes, or telephone lines. Ito po ang ating programang kabisig at syempre, kasama pa rin ang yung likod, No Gel Salad VR. Para sa ating unang bilang, pakinggan po natin ang awiting ni Gary Valenciano. Ang awiting sana maulit mo. So far, you've learned about the hardware used for producing and airing broadcast materials. Let us not forget about the facilities for broadcast transmission. Come on, let's visit the transmitter site. Here we find the transmitter and antenna system. The transmitter modulates and amplifies the audio frequencies from the console and passes or transmits them to the antenna system. The antenna system has two major functions. These are to affect more efficient radiation and to increase the effective coverage of the radio station. Isn't it also interesting to know how a broadcast from a radio station reaches our radio sets? I'll tell you the process of radio transmission. Radio communication is the transmission of sound through space to a point of reception. To accomplish this, microphones are used to convert sound waves into patterns of electrical energy. The electrical impulses together with those sounds from discs, tapes, or turntables are mixed and amplified within the console. The resulting audio waves are called electron waves these electron waves, representing the frequency and amplitude of the original sounds, are sent to the transmitter via audio cables. The transmitter in turn creates a carrier wave. It modulates the audio wave on the carrier wave, amplifies both to a suitable level, and passes the resulting signal on to the antenna system via transmission cables. From here, the signals are radiated to as wide an area that can be covered by the power of the station and the height of the antenna. The receiving sets collect the radio waves from the radio station through external and internal grounding system and convert them to electrical impulses. After suitable amplification, the electrical impulses pass through a detector in a radio set. The detector separates audio waves from carrier waves. The audio waves such as the announcer's voice, music, sound effects are further amplified and conducted to a coil mounted in a magnetic field. A voice coil is attached to a paper cone of a loudspeaker. The impulses cause the voice coil and the paper cone to vibrate. The vibrations of the cone result in the sound waves similar to those that are projected by the announcer in the studio. Therefore, we hear voices, music, and sound effects in our receiving sets. What I've discussed is the process of radio transmission. This time, I want to update you with the trends in radio broadcasting. 
Perhaps you've been hearing the words digital broadcasting, online radio, and computer-based production. These are breakthroughs in radio broadcasting. What exactly is digital broadcasting? Simple. It is the transmission and reception of sound that has been processed using technology comparable to that used in CD players.